Well hi everyone and welcome back to Not Another Bonsai channel. We've actually just got me in the middle of just checking out these trees and you know it's kind of funny this year because we've had a very warm and muggy start to the year and what this meant is a lot of these trees have started to break dormancy a little bit sooner than normal. So because we have bud break happening it may be time to start thinking about repotting some of these trees. So you may remember if you've been following the channel for a while that most of these trees were kindly sent to me from uh, Brad. Now Brad, as I said before, he doesn't have a YouTube channel. I'm not sure if he's considering doing that or not, but he is a fantastic person within the bonsai community. And he does uh, kind of focus on collecting Yamadori trees. And uh, what, what he does is he, he, you know, he keeps a lot because he obviously develops them himself as fantastic bonsai trees. And he does have some brilliant trees in his collection. But what he also does as he put some up for sale on his eBay page. So I will put a link to that in the description box below. And um, yeah, if you're interested, you know, get in touch with Brad and I'm sure he'll be able to help you out with a nice collected Yamadori tree. But anyway, going back to these, we have a nice selection of different trees, uh, all different varieties and all different stages of development. So I think what we'll do, we'll pick one out today and repot it into a bonsai pot. So the tree that I'm thinking about repotting is this nice little tree, and this is an English elm. So this little English elm, fantastic. The buds are just starting to pop on this. So I thought this would be an ideal time to repot it. Now, as you might know, if you've been a follower of my channel, um, when I received all of these trees, they were bare rooted. So what I had to do is quickly repot them just into regular garden compost, just to hold them for a month or two. I mean, I didn't really want to keep them in water over that period, just in case it froze. And of course it wouldn't do the roots any good. So I just put them in ordinary compost. So in theory, this should be quite easy just to get out of the pot because it hasn't been in this pot for too long. So the moment of truth, how will this come out of the pot? So just ease the sides and just like so. Yeah, it's coming out nice and easy. A little bit of root is stuck in there just like so. All of that compost has just started put in there a few, well, a few weeks back. And this is our root system. Quite a lot of root. Very, very healthy tree. You can see we do have white roots, so it is just starting to, to grow. Yeah, we have uh, white tips on the tip of that. So yeah, it's probably a little bit too late for this one. That just shows you how humid it's been. But I think we'll go ahead with it anyway, because I do ideally want to get this into a bonsai pot. So yeah, the pot that I have here, uh, this is one that I bought from uh, a potter down here in the town of Lewis. And uh, he, yeah, he makes a whole bunch of, well, he doesn't make bonsai pots. But he makes sort of pots for like uh, trinket pots and pet bowls and things like that. So what I tend to do is I've always buy them from his bargain basket that he has outside his door. And these are pretty cheap, like five pound a pot. So really, you know, a real bargain. And all I do is I just drill a hole in the base of them just using a diamond encrusted uh, drill bit. If you're interested to know how I go about doing that, uh, I will put a link up here. I've created a couple of videos now showing you how to drill holes in pots. So yeah, if you're interested in that, you know, take a look at those videos. It's a really easy, you know, an affordable way to create your own budget pot if you're doing it on a, on sort of limited exp you know, expenses. So what I'm also going to do is just use this little root rake that Matt from Bobcat Bonsai kindly made for me. So yeah, thanks again, Matt. We're going to put this to test. First project this has ever been used on. So teasing away the soil with Bobcat Bonsai's custom made root rake. This has been made out of a horseshoe and he's just with these uh, little fingers or tines, I think you call them, just in the end, they're fantastic. What we're gonna do here is just go around combing out the roots and it'd be kind of interesting seeing what kind of a root structure we have on this. As I was saying earlier, you know, I just quickly repotted this into compost, you know, without a lot of care or attention really, because of course it this, whether this parcel of trees actually arrived on box, oh no, it was uh, the day before Christmas Eve, so it'd been 23rd and Obviously being in you know end of December wasn't the ideal time to start doing bonsai refining work. So I just put it into the greenhouse. I'll put all of the trees in the greenhouse. And after Christmas, I got a big bag of compost and just potted these up into plastic uh, flower pots. So just gently working our way around the root base. You know, as I say, you know, these were collected by Brad. Uh, he does he digs these up or grows them in his 
his, his, you know, his yard or his garden. And most of these have just been grown in the ground. So I do think this is one of the first, if not the first, root pruning that this little tree has ever had. So, yeah, it's going to be kind of interesting to see what kind of a root system we have on it. We can see we certainly do have plenty of really long, really long roots. Wow. I'm just working this soil away from the root structure here and we're beginning to get it down to the, the bare roots. I think this will need yeah, final dunk in a bowl of water, we'll wash off all of this remaining soil and yeah, try to select some roots. But we can see we have an interesting one coming up here. That's going in a funny angle. Uh, so a funny sort of kink going on here comes out. We've got a whole bunch of roots going up in the same direction. So yeah, interesting root system. So the least. So now we can see all of the roots a bit better and we can start making some choices. So with the root pruners in hand, let's uh, make our way through. So the first thing that I'm noticing is we can, where's my chopstick just down here. So we can see there's a funny knuckle coming off of here. So we have a, it comes out almost at a right angle and then it dips under. So you've got one root coming off of it, two roots coming off of it, three roots coming off of it. And that's quite high up. And then you also have a root going down, going down. I mean, what a weird looking root. But of course we do have the mat of roots near the base. So imagine, that's not, I imagine this was a cutting that's taking because we have some nice roots coming right from the base. So I'm wondering, should we just come in here and remove this whole section? What it will mean is we'll do away with all of this and just rely on the roots below. I and mean, that's gonna be a big, big gamble to make that uh, choice. But this is an elm, they are pretty resilient, they can tolerate a lot, but we will be reducing the root system by, ooh, more than half. I mean, that is gonna be a gamble if we do that. Uh, I'm wondering if I could use some, well, we definitely wanna get rid of this. I mean, that just looks ugly. So let's get rid of that. So here's that funny knuckle of a root coming off in that, that funny direction. Uh, yeah, so this this root, this root here, that can go. We do not need that. There's nothing attractive about that at all. Let's take that out, just like so. We have, yeah, I think I'm just gonna come in here with the concave cutters and cut that completely off, just like so. And that gets that ugly, ugly looking knuckle of the root removed. Now it's taken a few roots with it, but you know, this is an elm and I'm sure it will recover just fine. We would also come in here and just remove these smaller roots just in here. They're way above our root plane. And there's also a root just on the other side, just here. Move that too. And there's also a root just around here on the other side. We'll remove that too. So one thing is for sure, we don't need these roots to be quite as long. So let's uh, cut this one back to here. Nice fine root just coming off in that direction. I'm not sure if you can see that, but nice fine root coming off there. Uh, this root here is coming up and then going around. That's not that's not good. Uh, let's cut it back to the section where the straight part ends. Get rid of all of that root. That's a lot of root. All of that root. And we have this big long, big long root. So again, this comes off and then it goes off in a right angle. Now there is a fine little root coming off in this direction, which is good. And there's a few finer roots on it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut just beyond the curve. You can see we have the curve there. I'm gonna cut just beyond the curve just like so. And that's a lot of root taken off. Then near the base of this tree, we have a root that's coming down Yeah, it's coming down and around, but I'm wondering, can we bring that round in that direction? I think we could, I think we could. Yeah, I think that will work, but we don't need it to be quite as long. So we have some nice roots coming up from that, from that section. So let's cut that off just there. And with that, just give it a rough tidy up, just going around the outside, cutting back some of these roots. That's the one we just cut a minute ago. Nice fine root on that, just 
cut it back just like that. Nice switch there, nice switch on the tip there. Isn't looking that healthy that route, let's cut that back. Healthy portion, it's not looking very good that route, let's cut that back. And uh, no, there's growth on the end of that one, I'm gonna keep that. Uh, we have a curvy route here, comes around, let's uh, cut it back here. There's plenty of roots a little bit further back, so snip that back just there, get rid of the tip. Looking good. And that's our route that we're going to bring down. And I don't think that it's looking too bad. As an initial root pruning for this tree, keep in mind it's never had a root pruning. That isn't too bad. So that's a whole lot of root that's come off. We have some big bits, some really long bits of root that have come off. We have some shorter bits with a whole bunch of feeder roots on it. Uh, this one, look at the feeder roots on that. That's all come off. Uh, this one, a whole load of feeder roots on the end. And some smaller roots just here. But I do think that'll be fine. We'll pop that up into some good quality soil and I'm sure that'll recover and just flourish and, and become a very nice little tree in the future. Right, so as I said earlier, you know, this is the pot that I'm thinking of using for this tree. And I think that tree will go into that pot just fine. That route is a little bit too long. So let's, let's cut that back to here. And that should go into that pot just fine. So there's obviously a big hole in the bottom of this pot. So what we're going to need is a little bit of drainage screen. I'm just going to use this. It's that nylon mesh. Works perfectly for me. So we'll just come in here, cut a little square. I'm just using the root pruners here. You can obviously use anything you like to cut this. I have scissors would do just fine, but these are on the go. So cut through like so. And that will just cover the hole in the base of the pot, just like so. Now there is a bit of a debate in the bonsai world as to whether or not you should wire the drainage screen into the bottom of the pot. Now personally for me I don't and you might notice that I've only put one drainage hole in the bottom of this pot and I haven't put little holes for wire either and that's personally that's just a personal preference. I don't like to wire my trees into the pot, I don't really see the point and I don't like to wire the drainage screen into the base of the pot or the bottom of the pot. Reason being you can if you hold that in place with your finger and you take some of your ones I saw you can just put that on top maybe a couple of handfuls put that in the base of your pot and that's going to hold the drainage screen in the base of the pot in the, well, the base of the pot sorry uh, just fine that'll be absolutely fine and of course you plant your tree on top that, that drainage screen isn't going to go anywhere and if you protect your tree I mean if it, it does wobble in the pot you can put rocks and stones on there to hold it in place and once these roots establish and get growing it will bed itself into this pot absolutely fine and there won't be any reason at all wire the tree in the pot that's just my personal preference but of course there are many out there who disagree with that idea and uh, <laughs> strongly believe that you should but you know depending on what side of the fence you, you sit you know you either don't wire your tree in the pot or you do but that's just personal preference so I just have this layer of soil just in the bottom of this pot now in case you're wondering what mixture this is this is a cocoa mix a little bit of fine grit and perlite now I'm only using that mix for this this tree um, I mean, this is an elm, so it'll grow quite easily in pretty much anything anyway, but the, I'm only using it for this because uh, this is the mixture that I have on the go at the minute because I've been working on a lot of seedling projects. I've been you know, putting on a lot of uh, seedlings and things like that. So this is what I have on the go at the minute and added a little bit of extra perlite just for drainage. I will be working on a, a, a new soil medium, I guess you could say. So I've bought a big bag of perlite, a big bag of vermiculite, and some pine bark and a few other bits and pieces. So yeah, that is all coming in the future and we can experiment a bit more with some soil mediums. But for this little tree, this is just gonna grow in this mixture here. So all you wanna do is just position the roots where you like them or where you would like them to grow. And I'm just, yeah, make sure you, 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 know, you put them in a radial pattern because that's what ultimately how trees grow in the, in the wild or bit, you know, <laughs> You've been following my channel for a while and you've been on some of the nature walks with me you can see that trees grow in some really funky styles and that so yeah with nature there aren't really any rules but you know in bonsai we do try to you know create a radial root base all uh, right so with all of the roots now positioned uh, in the way that i would like them i'm just going to put this mix with the soil medium just on top just put it in make sure it goes evenly around the pot and then for this tree, I'm going to use the chopstick here just to poke it in between some of these roots and make sure that there's full contact 
between the soil medium and the roots. You don't want any air pockets, ideally. I mean, we will water this in, and of course, you know, when you when you come to do that and you water it in, that is going to you know fill a lot of those little pockets anyway. But you know, this just ensures that there's strong contact between the soil and the roots. A little bit low just on this side here, so let's get a bit more. Come in here, spread it around. So there it is guys, the little English jam all potted up into a little bonsai pot. And that looks kind of crude at the minute with the two stones on there or two, you know, flints and well, flint and a piece of concrete. But, you know, this is just for the next few weeks. You know, I, um, I'm going to put this into the greenhouse just for the next, uh, well, a couple of weeks, maybe maybe up to a month, just in case we do have any frost or any, uh, well, freezing temperatures or snow or anything like that. I mean, keep in mind, I'm repotting this tree in the middle of February. So you never know. I mean, we ha it has been known that we have had snow down here in the south of England in uh, late February or even early March. So just to protect it from those, those possible temperatures, again, the forecast looks pretty good, but just in case... I'll keep it in the greenhouse where it's, it's, you know, stay away from frost and everything else. But uh, there we have it. That is that little tree. Well, thanks for joining me on this one. Kind of a, a fun little project today, just repotting the English elm and, you know, putting it into this new home of a bonsai pot. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, take it easy, have a great day, and I will catch you on the next one.